Good morning, everyone. Hello. Uh, by way of introduction, my name is Sean Lee. I am from the uh, Azure Spring Apps product group. And uh, here with me, I have uh, Adeep Saikali from uh, Solution Engineer from New York. Uh, hi, folks. I'm Adeep Saikali. I'm the uh, uh, solutions lead for Azure Spring Apps and Tenzo application platform. And I'm a code janitor. OK. All right. So we uh, today, we're here to talk to you all about the easiest way to run and scale your Spring Apps on Azure via Azure Spring Cloud. Okay, uh, we have an action jam, the uh, action packed agenda today. So I'm gonna go through um, these slides fairly quickly. The way we're gonna structure today's talk is there are gonna be three segments. First segment is gonna be an introduction uh, part where we give you just a very quickly overview of what is Azure Spring Apps. Uh, hopefully at this point, I think um, I see some familiar faces in the audience. Uh, I, hopefully many of you have heard of Azure Spring Apps at this point. So I will fly through them fairly quickly. And then in the second segment is Adib is going to come in and talk about the enterprise and uh, Azure Spring Apps enterprise uh, offering. And then lastly, we have some new exciting announcement to make. So make sure you stay for uh, that part as well. Okay, so let's get started. Um, Azure Spring Apps, what it is. Uh, it is a fully managed service to run any Spring Apps on Azure. It is simple as that, okay? Uh, it is a jointly built solution product from Azure, from uh, Microsoft and VMware. Uh, there are three core value props when we design Azure Spring Apps. First one being fully managed infrastructure you, so you as a developer can focus on application development and not get bogged down with all the nitty gritty detail for, for infrastructure. Second part is, what we call application lifecycle management. Uh, how do you deploy an app? How do you start, stop, and restart your app once it's deployed in the cloud? Uh, and lastly, monitoring, okay? Um, how do you uh, troubleshoot your apps once they're deployed to the cloud? How do you, um, um, how do you see if your, uh, the performance of your app is up to expectation, right? So those are some of the key considerations that we have at, at top of our mind when we design the product. Uh, Azure Spring Apps is built on top of Azure Kubernetes service, but you as a developer do not need to learn or manage anything on Kubernetes. Okay. Uh, on the next part, we're going to take you, uh, uh, just give you a, a sneak peek under the hood uh, on what uh, the, how the things are laying out in Azure Spring Apps. So on this diagram, we're showing you two uh, rectangles. So the one on the left is showing where uh, this is a, a single um, isolated Kubernetes cluster where we run your user apps, okay? And in addition to that, we also have some telemetry agents that is responsible for collecting metrics and logs from your apps and instrument that to your monitoring APM solution. Box on the right is what we call a system cluster. This is where we run some of the managed spring components for you, service registry, service discovery, spring cloud gateway. Uh, your apps can talk to any of the data messaging or, or, uh, or uh, um, storage that are either running on-prem or in the cloud, okay? Uh, for monitoring, you can use Azure Active Directory, um, sorry, uh, Azure Monitor to monitor both the logs as well as metrics for your app, uh, but you're not limited to that. You're, you're more than welcome to use any of the APM solution providers that you are currently using today. As a matter of fact, Azure Spring Cloud come out of the box, supports uh, deep integration with some of the worst industry leading um, APM uh, providers in this space. Okay. Uh, for security, you can use Azure Active Directory to protect your apps, and we support both user assigned identities as well as, as, well as machine assigned identities. Okay. Uh, keep using automation tools that you're already using today. It can be Jenkins, Azure DevOps, uh, Terraform, um, and lastly, for developer experience, we, we want you to continue to use the tools that you currently use today, uh, Azure Spring Apps, uh, and as, as part of the broader Spring on Azure team, we have embedded deep integration uh, with in, uh, IntelliJ, um, VS Code, Gradle, uh, and Maven, and we're gonna actually show you some of that uh, integration look like in a later demo today. Oh, so by the way, speaking of demos, there's gonna be multiple demos today throughout the session. Uh, some of them are gonna be longer and some of them are gonna be shorter. Uh, and also, I forgot to mention for Q&A, because we, I think we're gonna be on a tight agenda, uh, we're not, most likely not gonna have a Q&A session at the end, but if you have a quick questions, make, uh, you feel free to just fire them off during the session. 
Uh, Adib and I will be available after the session, like in the general area, uh, and we are also available uh, via email uh, after the session. Okay. Okay, uh, and lastly, yeah, for, uh, as I mentioned, this is a, a fully uh, supported product from Microsoft and VMware, and that is financially backed by our service level SLA. Okay. Uh, to deploy the app, there are three simple steps. Create the service, create the app, and deploy the app. Okay. Uh, your application is never an island once it's deployed to the cloud. Chances are you're gonna need to interact with other Azure services. This is where we, uh, from the broader Spring on Azure team, have developed a, 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 a plethora of libraries that allows your app to talk to other Azure services, uh, take Azure uh, uh, security, um, uh, uh, take Spring Security, for example. You can use Spring Security to talk to Azure Active Directory. Okay, and so in a nutshell, Azure Spring Apps has something for everyone here. If you're a developer, you get to build, scale, distribute a workload at cloud scale. Uh, you can externalize, configure uh, it, um, your services, automate end-to-end -end solutions, and monitor. Uh, if you're an IT operator, uh, you get to eliminate the need to, to host the um, Spring middleware. Uh, you get unlimited scale without additional uh, hardware procurement or data center. Uh, if you are IT executive, Azure Spring Apps offers a peace of mind, right? Uh, by highly available through unpredictable values, uh, uh, recover faster from failures, strengthen your security posture with Azure, and last but certainly not the least, supported by Microsoft and VMware, okay? Uh, this last slide is, um, is we're just you know, giving an example of some of our uh, customers that are running their production workload on Azure Spring Apps today, okay? So with that, I'm gonna hand it over to uh, my partner, Adib Saikali, to talk about the, the enterprise offering. I just need to okay, let me upload this. Okay. All right. Uh, can you folks hear me? Okay, this is the network. Oh, that's the HDMI. All right, I promise you just like three more slides and demos, okay, for about half an hour. We'll be in the IDE doing fun stuff. All right. Uh... All right. So Azure Azure Spring Apps is. Uh, been working on this for the past like I don't know four years or something since day one. So it was just an idea in, v in Pivotal slash VMware at the time, and uh, we have a really cool uh, thing called Azure uh, Spring Apps Enterprise. And what this gets you is some pretty cool stuff. One is you get ninety nine point nine five percent SLA versus ninety nine point nine and three nines. Um, but you know, really, it gives you a whole lot of really awesome Tanzu components, which I'm going to demo for you afterwards. So I'm not going to talk about all of this bullet point list. I will just show it to you. Um, one of the cool things that you do get is Polyglot. Who's got a 100% uh, pure Spring application? You have no Node, no Python, no Ruby, nothing else other than Spring. Raise your hand if that's all you have is only Spring. All right. Three lucky people, four lucky people. <laughs> so, but we all have like more than one language, and we'd like to be able to run things on Azure Spring apps that are not written in Spring, like GoLang, Python, and others. So I'll show you uh, an example of that. Uh, one of the um, other things that we all love in the Spring community is Spring Cloud Gateway. Who's using Spring Cloud Gateway today? Yeah, a few people. Um, so Spring Cloud Gateway is integrated and running natively in Azure. I'm going to show you that. It does all sorts of really cool stuff that the open source version doesn't do because we just added that code to it. Um, like I said, we have this uh, bigger SLA. And here's my favorite part about it. Right? We all love Spring because we have lots of projects that help us solve our problems. How many people here are using Spring 2.5, boot 2.5? Anybody? All right, who's on? Uh, boot 3. Raise your hand if you're on boot 3.0. Raise your hand if you're on 2.7. Right. Raise your hand if you're on 2.6. 2.5. 4. 
Some people? Okay. So one of the problems that uh, we've heard from customers about is it's hard for them to stay up to date with the latest version of Spring Boot. And uh, one of the things that you get out of um, uh, Azure Spring apps is that you actually get extended support for Spring Boot open source. So as you all know, we always support the current release of Spring Boot and the previous one. So 3.0 is currently supported. 2.7 is currently supported with open source security fixes, open source bug fixes. However, if you're running Spring Boot 2.6, we can't like support every old open source release. It's just not enough hours in the day for the Spring team. If they did that, you guys would get no new features, right? <laughs> and that would make you very unhappy. So uh, instead, what we do is for commercial customers using Azure Spring apps, if you are using it, anything that is in yellow, which is the extended support, you are supported for your Spring application. All of the parts of Spring, all projects. Does this make sense? Right, so if you're an enterprise, just run there and you're covered. So let's actually learn how to use this. Who's ready for demos? Raise your hand. All right. So you gotta tell me in the back if my fonts are big enough. Okay, so the first demo I'm going to show you is what your life is like as a user of this. Who here has never used Azure before? Okay, welcome. You're going to get a demo of the Azure portal. <laughs> so you log into Azure, and on the Azure portal, you type the magic keyword spring. And you'll see here a service will show up called Azure Spring Apps. And if you want to create a place to run your Azure Spring application, what? Oh, hold on. Uh, is there so Oh, I think there's a problem. Hold on. Can you see my screen now is the question. Huh? Uh, for, oh, here we go. Now we can. Okay. Somehow it was. Okay, there we go. Okay, so I will, I will go back to. So you, you log into the Azure portal, and then you type the word spring. And now you can see Azure Spring apps will show up. You click on that. And all you need to spin it up is you see this Create button. You hit on Create, and it's going to launch a wizard. And it's going to ask you some questions. So I'm going to say, what subscription do you want to put it in? I'd like to put this in the demo resource group. Let's call it Adib uh, Spring IO. And then um, I'm going to select uh, which plan I want. I'd like to use the enterprise uh, plan. And Select that. And then I pick a region, like say maybe I want this in, I don't know, let's put it in Brazil South. Why not? And then you say, hey, I'd like my Azure Spring apps to be zone redundant. So that means I want to run it on multiple availability zones. So if one data center was to burn down or get flooded or lose power or have a bug, the other data centers, the other availability zones would keep going. Um, I select, I agree to the terms and conditions. And now you start like being able to control all the different aspects of it. Like for example, we'll talk about what the build service does shortly, but this thing will containerize your code for you without you having to write a Docker file, and it does it super securely. So you can decide uh, what you want to do with that. Uh, who likes? Who uses Eureka? Netflix Eureka. So if you click, if you check this checkbox, you get an automatically fully managed, secure, enterprise quality Eureka installation. Uh, who uses Spring Cloud Config? Okay, so this checkbox will make sure you have access to that. Um, who uses Spring Cloud Gateway? All right, this will make sure you have a Spring Cloud Gateway that's managed for you, and an API portal where you can try out all the stuff with uh, Swagger and all of that. Um, there's also a bunch of cool developer tools. Who uses Spring Boot Admin? Okay, a few people. So App Live View is kind of like Spring Boot Admin, but uh, 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 like does some stuff that's uh, different take on it. Uh, we also have these things called App Accelerator. So point here is that you get to pick and choose how you want to configure which spring dependencies you want to put in your environment. Once you've done that, um, you know, you're literally just say, who likes log aggregation? You want to see the logs from every application in your system all in one place. You've got like Elk, Stack, all that type of stuff, Splunk. There you go. That's all you have to do here is actually just one checkbox, and it will make one for you. Who likes distributed tracing? Zipkin, all that. Who, who likes running Zipkin or distributed tracing infrastructure? All the hands just went down. Nobody wants to do that. In this case, you don't have to worry about it. Check one box. And uh, Azure itself is going to handle the distributed tracing for you. So all your stuff that uses Spring Cloud, it'll just beautifully render everywhere. 
And uh, that's what's called Azure App Insights. You can use other stuff if you want. And then you can, like, if you have enterprise networking needs, you can, you can turn that on, makes your InfoSec people happy. Uh, you go to the very end of this, and it thinks for a few seconds, it's gonna turn blue. I hit create, wait about 15 minutes, and you'll have a fully functional environment to deploy your Spring apps. Is everybody clear on what it takes to create it? Okay, just fill out, answer some questions, the same as any, any other kind of cloud resource. I'm not gonna create it right now because it, like I already created one, you know, like the cooking shows, I have one in the oven. Uh, so this is the one that I've, I've already created. This is what it looks like when it's done. So what I wanna do now is uh, show you what it takes to actually deploy an application to this once it's been instantiated. So I'm going to demonstrate using the world's most sophisticated Hello World application. Can folks in the back see this? This is, this is too small, hold on. I don't wanna give anybody an eye test, so let's, let's make the fonts bigger. Maybe a white background myself. Uh, you know what, that is correct, whoa. Why is it, no, I don't want five, I want 25. I thought I made them bigger beforehand, but I didn't. All right, let's go to light, sure, why not? Is this better? Oh, but it changed the wrong settings, so. Uh, It really doesn't want to type 25. Like, really, I d two, five? Sheesh. Uh, I am not very good at that technique with two. Oh my god, okay. I will disconnect, change it, and then reconnect, okay? That's <laughs> I apologize about this, but apparently there's a bug in IntelliJ here, so. <laughs> I thought I made the settings large enough. All right, here we go. Now it's actually big enough to let me type it. All right. And we come back with large fonts that everybody can see. There we go. Okay, you can see it in the back? All right, so the world's most uh, awesomest Hello World application. As you can see, it says hello, the time is, and it tells you the current time. So we can see that we're actually doing something with it. So in order for me to uh, deploy this application, uh, I have to do two things. One is, I run this command, let's copy and paste it, called az spring app create. And what this command is going to do is it's using the Azure CLI. So I'm asking the Azure CLI to, uh, I would like to access the spring service and I would like to create an application within that service. I'm going to give this application a name, Hello Spring 2, and I tell it which Azure Spring Apps instance I want it to deploy this application into, which resource group it's in, and I'm telling it I'd like this to be publicly accessible on the internet. So what it's going to do now, it's going to uh, contact Azure, and it's going to uh, create a place for me to then upload my JAR file. All right, so while it's doing that, we'll go here. You can see right now I've got uh, uh, different times that I've deployed this. So for example, uh, if I go here, um, I can see details of that application. Let's see if this application has finished deploying. Yes, it did. So this particular one is, you can see what it does. Like that's, that's all the app does. What's interesting here is what can you do once your app is, is, is there? So let's check in on this. Okay, so this one is finished. You can see after I ran uh, this command, it basically said, um, it came back with some JSON which gives you details about it. We don't need to go into that today because we're not doing a deep dive. What's important is the simplicity that I hope you're noticing. So the second command I'm going to run now is az spring deploy. 
So I created the spot for it to uh, give my app. And this time, instead of create, I'm going to say, I have code I'd like to deploy. And notice this extra argument at the end. Dash dash, artifact path, target, simple demo 01, snapshot.jar. That's it. All I did was Maven W clean package. I got it up with a jar file. I ask Azure Spring Apps to Azure Spring Apps deploy. That's going to upload my jar file into Azure Spring Apps. Azure Spring Apps is going to containerize that using build packs. Right? Who, ha who here has used uh, Maven W spring boot, spring dash boot build colon build image to create a container image? That's kind of what it does, but at industrial scale inside of Azure Spring Apps using much more advanced techniques than what's available to Spring Boot build image. So this is going to take it a little bit of time to run. So what I'm going to do instead is just uh, in the interest of time, I'm going to go here. I'm going to show you what the output was uh, for the version that I literally ran while Sean was talking while I was sitting in, uh, in the front row there. So when you run this, this example, um, it'll go through, it'll upload the code, and this is where you start seeing build packs come into action. So it identified this application as a Java app, so it automatically brings you an OpenJDK. It automatically will, will uh, generate uh, software bill of materials. It will automatically uh, can, uh, recognize it as a Spring Boot app, and it will configure it correctly. It will automatically hook it up to Azure Monitoring. Um, and as you look through this output, you'll see here like what version of Java it picked, uh, how much memory, and all of that stuff is computed for you. And the best part about it is there's no Docker file. And the image that's created is super secure and super efficient. Like uh, I did a workshop on uh, Wednesday. Was anybody in my workshop here? The modern, uh, yeah, couple of people. Spent a lot of time on containerizing things. That was like almost two and a half hours. And for most people, it's just, as a developer, you just want somebody to do it for you. Mostly, that's what I do as a developer. So you can see here, um, you know, once it finishes, it'll be up and running. That's this version here. Let's see what we can do with it. So one of the things you can do, uh, surprise, surprise, is you can go here, and um, you can scale it up. So you can decide to give it you know, more CPUs. You can decide to give it more memory. Sec, click, done. You can decide that you want to uh, scale out. Like, hey, I don't want one instance of my application. I would like to have 197 instances. <laughs> or I would like to, I don't want to say how many I want. I would like to do some auto scaling. And so you can decide to do it based on a metric. And maybe the metric that you want to do is based on, um, uh, let's let's do it based on I don't know um, the depth of a queue, or uh, you can go based on something like Tomcat. Where is this? Let's, uh, let's do Tomcat. Uh, <clears throat> Tomcat sessions mm, created. Okay, the more HTTP sessions you have, the more instances you want. So you have complete control over that. You can go here. You could do things like add volumes to attach your disks to your app. Um, there's all the stuff that makes uh, information security happy, like uh, custom TLS. Uh, but here's stuff that might make you happy as a developer. I can just go here. I can go like this. I can click Connect. And right there, I'm going to be in that container. Ta-da! I'm in the container. Who likes that? But there's more. Uh, you can go to your IDE, and if you have the Azure plugin installed, you can go here, like for example, and you can navigate to Azure Spring Apps, right? You can find your application here, and you can go like this, and you can debug it. And let's see. Uh, yep, OK. Access test endpoint. So I'm trying to get to this thing. Oh, it stopped in the debugger. Look at that. Ah, uh, who likes that? <laughs> Everybody's hands go up. 
All right? So main message is this is very simple to use. This is a technology for running applications that is aimed at developers. It is not aimed at DevOps people. It is not aimed at SREs. It is not aimed at infrastructure experts. It's designed for you as a developer to be able to learn how to drive it. In fact, I think most of you uh, after this, if you went and you logged into Azure, you probably complete the tutorial in about like an hour, hour and a half, even if you've never used Azure before. Uh, what's also important to know is, OK, you might like it as a developer, but what if your infrastructure people don't like it? The answer is they like it because it has all the infrastructure things they care about. So they can still automate it with their Terraform and, and, and whatnot. Okay? So uh, let's actually let this request through. Um, so that is uh, covering that. Let me go back here to the slides and see what the slides are telling me to do. All right, so let's go here and talk a little bit about what happened. So what I showed you was how to create an app with Azure Spring App Create, how to deploy it. Uh, I didn't show you view the logs just in the interest of time. And you can run one command. You can see the logs coming through. You can scale your app, connect instances, and all this type of stuff. You can do blue-green deployment, all of that. But a little bit of what happened under the covers. Let's talk about how to containerize code. So traditionally, people write Docker files, which are fantastic, super powerful, super flexible, but there's a problem. The problem is using them at scale. If you work for a large company and you have a lot of teams, sometimes different teams pick different base images. They pick different uh, versions of Java. And that becomes a bit of a security issue. And so what typically happens is that those companies will say, you have to use our corporate base image, or somebody from DevOps has to review your Docker file to make sure that you didn't do something that was insecure. Does anybody have a review step for the Docker files in their company right now? OK. And, um, and so from a patching perspective, this becomes a huge, huge issue. Uh, so in Azure Spring Apps, you never have to write a Docker file, ever because it will containerize it for you, and it does this using an industry standard called Cloud Native Build Packs. All right? Uh, you can go to buildpacks.io to learn about it, but the way to think about Build Packs is think of it like a Maven plugin or a Gradle plugin. You feed it source code on one side or jar file, and out the other side comes a container image that is super optimized from a security perspective and from a performance perspective. Uh, what is actually running in Azure Spring Apps is something called the VMware Tanzu Build Service, which is based on an open source project called Paketo, which supports, you know, what we're supporting there are Spring Boot, Node, Go, .NET, Python, and just plain static files. So if you have a typical enterprise application, you're going to have everything you need in there. So just to recap, code, build packs, container image, it has all the best practices baked into those things. Comments, questions at this point? Any questions about this? All right, so um, let's move on to now talk a little bit about your typical application architecture. Just take a moment, look at this. Does this did you, raise your hand if your apps kind of look like this. Requests come in, goes through some API gateway, there's some backend APIs, there's a front end, like. JavaScript, HTML, mobile app, and you have some identity provider that the API gateway sends you to to log you in. You have some databases that your backend uses. You have a secrets manager to store all your credentials, and you have a whole bunch of automation and monitoring all running somewhere. So let me show you an example of such an application. So I have this app here, this demo app called Acme Fitness. It's just an online store. So I can go here and I can like, hey, I want to shop for a bike. Uh, I can add the bike to my cart. It's going to say, oh, no, you need to log in. And you watch this. is going to go really fast, so you have to pay attention. So, ah, again? Darn. All right, hold on. I have to remember to escape from the presentation. All right, I will, I will go back then to here. So it's a, it's a web store. Okay. And on this web store, I can, I can go here and I can like say, I'd like to uh, add this bike to my shopping cart. And it's going to say, oh, you need to be logged in. OK. Well, I'm going to click on the little login button. Watch what happens really fast. All right, I logged in. All right, what really happened was magic. And you didn't see all the redirects. 
So uh, what happened is that it sent me to the Azure Active Directory SSO server, which recognized that I was logged into the Azure portal using my VMware account. And since I was already logged in with my VMware account, it automatically logged in. So I'm logged into this web app using my VMware ID. Does that make sense? And, and it was, that's the magic of Spring Cloud Gateway there. So essentially what you, what you see here is who's got apps that kind of look like this, like not a retail app, but like that has that arch architecture, right? Pretty much everyone. So the question becomes, how do we map this kind of architecture to, um, to Azure Spring Apps? So let's go through and learn a little bit about this particular sample app that I just showed you, because it's, it's an interesting app. Oh. Okay, by the way, the source code for it is just gonna flash on the screen the link if, okay, it's this, uh, hopefully it'll be edited out all of the flips between the, uh, on, on, the uh, on the monitor here. So the Azure Spring app, that's aka.ms fitness store, you find all the source code, everything you need to re with step-by-step -step instructions to do this yourself. So in this case, what my application consists of is, hello, is that. So I have requests that are coming in. They're going to Azure Spring Apps. Spring Cloud Gateway is intercepting those requests. And if you're not logged in, it sends you to Active Directory. If you are, it forwards your identity information to uh, the backend APIs. I have three Spring Boot applications, uh, one for uh, ordering, catalog, payment. Uh, there's a, a Python-based shopping cart and a C-sharp-based ordering application. And there's a static HTML node-based uh, front end, right? It's storing its state in Postgres, and it's storing its credentials in Azure Key Vault. Um, so I consider this to be the archetypical kind of I'm building a web app in an enterprise scenario. Uh, so we're not going to go through the process of uh, deploying it, um, but I will, uh, I'd like to give you a little bit of how, uh, Spring, uh, uh, how Spring Cloud Gateway is working, then I'm gonna switch to the Azure portal, and I'm going to show you the configuration, how all this stuff comes together. Um, all right, so uh, for Spring Cloud Gateway, you know, this is the architecture diagram you want to kind of have in mind. The requests come in, uh, they go to a handler, uh, gateway hand, uh, handler mapping. It identifies for this URL if you're supposed to do something, and then, it sends you through a set of uh, pre-request filters and then calls out to the proxy service, like the actual uh, application behind it. The response comes back and you go through a post-request processing. And so you can transform the request before it gets to the uh, API and after it comes out of the API. And there's all sorts of really cool capabilities for that. You can pretty much say, uh, Spring Cloud Gateway, do something to the request if it has this URL, if it has this header, if it has this cookie, all that type of stuff is there. And then there's all sorts of uh, really fun filters uh, that you can use. For example, um, there is a circuit breaker filter who, where you know, you, it tries to call out to a backend API that you've written and it gets a 500 error. And if it gets too many 500 errors in, say, a, a short period of time, it stops calling that service, gives it a chance to recover. Uh, here's an example of how you do rate limiting. Um, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to the portal and let you see this. So I'll go here. So first of all, to prove to you that this is real, uh, these are the five services uh, that are here. Card service, catalog, front end, identity, order, payment, all that type of stuff. If I scroll down here, you're gonna see these extra uh, Tanzu components. So we'll click on Spring Cloud Gateway as an example. And here, what I can see are the, is the configuration of it. So if I click here, you can see here where my login server is. You're not seeing my client ID and secret, but essentially that's where I configure single sign-on. On this guy here, I'm going to configure routing rules. So let's look at some live examples of that. The way you configure your routing rules, you just write a JSON file, and that JSON file allows you to, um, to specify certain things. Let's take an example here. So for my card service, 
it's basically saying if you do uh, an HTTP request to forward slash card item add slash user ID, whatever this user ID is, and it's an HTTP post, that this rule here should apply. Who's clear on how you decide what to do? You just set some rules in the predicates. And then it says, well, what would you like to do? So what I'd like to do is I'd like to strip out the prefix because the requests coming to my application, it has forward slash cart, but when I forward it to the cart service, it doesn't have, for, it, it's not doing like at spring MV, at uh, get mapping forward slash cart, it's doing at get mapping forward slash item add. Does that make sense? So we don't, we don't want that part there, so we, we ask it to strip it, strip the first part here. And then we're saying SSO enabled, as in, hey, we want to make sure that the user is logged in. If they're not logged in, send them to the SSO server. So that's what it does. And then the second thing it does is it does token relay equals to true, which means that can you please take the JSON web token that you got from the OpenID Connect server and forward it to the cart service? Then on the cart service, all you have to do is just secure it with Spring Security using at resource server. On your, on your, who's, who's with me? You're understanding the pattern? And this is all done with a replicated HTTP session. So it can auto scale up, auto scale down, produce metrics, all this type of stuff. So if you look through this thing here, uh, you'll see like a variety of examples of, of, of how to uh, uh, intercept these things and you know ordering and uh, redirecting and other uh, other stuff like that. So, any questions about Spring Cloud Gateway support here? Yeah, go ahead. So you wanted to strip the prefix in this case. Yeah. Why is it equal zero? Like, oh no, it's strip the first part of the prefix, like zero. The first, uh, yeah, the first the first part, like like an array, the zeroth element of the array. If you want to strip item, also you would put one. Yes. Yeah, actually, Abel works on this. He's right there. He's one of the, the developers. I'm, I'm really sorry. I didn't ask you why you are not removing the. Oh. Oh. Okay. <laughs> All right. So this is like false. Yeah, this is keeping the whole URL as yeah. it is. Yeah. Okay. Right. So if you wanted to do the strip. If you want to remove the card part, you'd put the strip prefix one. If you wanted to remove the card type, yeah. you'd put the strip prefix two. By okay. default, the gateway sets to one by default. Mm -hmm. This is different from the open source. Uh, because most customizable where you want to remove right. the Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Okay, that's, that's fair, that's fair. So if you have more advanced questions, ask that guy right there. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, so with this one, you have to configure using uh, the Azure CLI with the JSON configuration file because you're not, you're not writing your own implementation of like a Spring Boot application that has Spring Cloud Gateway on the class path and then you're configuring it uh, with your code. So you have to rely on the JSON file, which is actually not a bad idea for an enterprise type uh, configuration because it's a little bit more accessible uh, for, for more people and it does have some fairly interesting scalability and high availability features that aren't, you can write the code for it, but you just have to know really what you're doing to do it right. Okay. So let's uh, continue on here with um, a, uh, just wrap this up so we can see some really cool stuff. All right, so. So again, if you want to play around with this application, go to Fitness Store, aka MS Fitness Store, and you'll, you'll get to the Git repo that has all this code. Um, so check out the enterprise tier. You get higher level of availability, and you're going to get like tens of build service, gateway, uh, app live view and various other other features and my favorite feature of all is you get extended support for spring boot so all of your uh, stuff is going to be automatically patched so sean it's all yours
Okay, so as I mentioned before, we got some new products that, a pro product uh, announcement to make today. But before we talk about the product announcement, Seth, uh, we, I want to talk about the impetus of why we're making such changes in Azure Spring Apps. Uh, so we learn from our customers all the time, and here are some th things our customers are saying. Uh, my apps don't need to run at all the time, and they have bursts of traffic. Okay? Uh, I mean, Adib just showed you an app where it's, it's a shopping cart app. It's, all, it's running all the time. But there are instances where you have apps like event-driven apps that do not need to run all the time. And we're going to demo uh, one of such application patterns. Um, I need more flexibility in configuring the size of uh, my apps. Right? So uh, what we just saw was there an example where you can configure uh, uh, all the way to uh, four, four cores of CPUs. And our customers are demanding to have a wider range of, of app sizes. So we're going to show that as well. And lastly, despite the, the three simple steps that we showed, our customers are still saying there is quite a bit of hurdle to get in the getting started experience. So with that, today we are very excited to announce the Spring, uh, Azure Spring Apps Standard Consumption and Dedicated Plan. Okay. Uh, with the uh, consumption plan, you get uh, scale from zero and scale back to zero. This is a purely pay-as-you-go plan. You, don't, you only pay for what you use as opposed to the, uh, in other plans, you will pay for the resources that are pre-provisioned, okay? The standard consumption plan, we did a soft launch on that uh, in uh, last month. So that's already publicly available. You will find that in our official documentation. Uh, the second announcement we're making is the standard dedicated plan. This is a new plan that we are pre-announcing today. The actual feature will launch at Microsoft Build next um, uh, week, so May 23rd is when it's officially going to land. And what this plan is going to give you is single tenancy, special, more specialized hardware options like memory optimized uh, is, is the one that's supported today, and there are just going to be more uh, hardware skills coming in the future. And this plan is also going to give you more price predictability and cost savings when things are running at scale. Okay, but you're, even though those are two separate plans, you you can actually mix and match those two plans together to to get the best of both worlds. Let me show you what that looks like. Okay, so here I am on the Azure portal. Okay, it's the same portal that uh, Adib just showed you, uh, where we're creating the um, service instance. So over here, I have already got the standard consumption and dedicated plan selected. Okay. Uh, now, one thing I want to point out is the consumption dedicated plan is built on top of Azure uh, Container Apps as opposed to the Azure Kubernetes service. So what that entails is in order for you to create this plan, you must create an app environment uh, first. And to do that, uh, we're going to click on the Create New button in the Azure Container Apps environment blade. So over here is where I am presented with two options. One is a consumption-based only plan. And the second part is, this is the new plan we're unveiling at Microsoft Build next, uh, next week, is the consumption and dedicated workload profile. The word uh, uh, workload profile is just it's a, it's a way of saying the amount of resources that are going to be available to your apps. So I'm going to go ahead and select the, uh, the second plan here. And the moment that I do that, the workload profile tab opens up. So this is where you can add additional dedicated hardware to, uh, to support your apps. Notice that by default, uh, the workload profile has a consumption plan already created because it's a pay-as-you-go plan. If you're not using it, you're not charging it for it. But uh, here is where I can add additional um, hardware to that dedicated workload profile. So as you can see here today, we already have a couple of uh, uh, hardware in the D4 series, D4 all the way to D16. We already have a. We also have a memory optimized E series SKU where you can, you know, get uh, uh, more uh, memory all the way to up to 128 gigabyte of memory associated with your apps. Okay, so this is where you would uh, uh, create the uh, the app, uh, the workload profile, and then uh, I need to give it a name. Profile one. Once you do that, uh, here's where you can see your consumption plan and your dedicated workload profile have been added in one single Azure Container Apps environment. And when you deploy your app, you can select, I want my app to be uh, deployed against the consumption plan or against the dedicated plan. This is what we mean. You can mix and match them together. Okay. So that is that. Um, so for the next part, um, Where did I 
sort of Hindu slides. Okay. Uh, next up, we're going to show you a, a demo. This is going to be the event-driven app. Uh, it's a very simple architecture. Uh, it has Azure Spring apps sitting on the right-hand corner that is listening to a service bus queue. There are, so there are two concepts in service bus. There's a service bus queue and a service bus topic. Uh, don't ask me the difference between those two. I'm not a service bus guy. Um, but it's basically just processing messages from a service bus. It's gonna, and it's going to convert them to, from a lowercase to an uppercase. So not a very uh, exciting demo, but uh, conceptually it's, it's very simple. But it's demonstrated the con concept of event-driven apps and running uh, that on uh, Azure Spring Apps. Okay. So let me do that. To, we're going to look at the code for this guy here. Let me open up VS Code. I've already taken the liberty of changing the background to white, <laughs> so all good here. Uh, so the code, if we look at the code, the code is actually deceptively simple, only three lines of code. That is converting uh, the message from, uh, from a lowercase to uppercase. We're also outputting that to a log. Um, and that's it, right? Everything else is done behind the scenes, leveraging the magic of Spring Boot auto configuration and integration with Azure. Um, if we look at our palmsec.xml, this is where we've included the Spring Cloud Azure Stream binder for service bus library. Remember in the earlier slide where we showed you the, the library of integration libraries that we've created to talk to, Ad, to Azure services? So this is one of such examples. Uh, the Spring Cloud Azure Stream binder is uh, a wrapper on top of the Spring Cloud uh, Stream binder from the op open source community, right? Uh, and then, so this is the library we're going to use. And if we look at the application.yaml file, this is where we have defined the stream for the service bus that we're connecting to. Um, we don't have to tell it's a service bus. That part is, inclined, is implied because we're using service bus library. But look, here is where we're defining. It's, we're reading from a service bus queue here. And the source of that queue is, is called lowercase q, and the destination is called uh, uppercase q. Okay? So that is the, the app. It's a very simple app. Um, and to deploy this app, like Adib just showed you one way to deploy the, the app. But however, the, I'm going to show you another way to deploy it directly from your, your IDE. Uh, so if you come to the, uh, I'm using VS Code, by the way, but the same extension works in IntelliJ as well. If you come to the target folder and locate your jar file here, and you right click on this guy, the jar file, and then you ha you're presented with a deploy to Azure Spring Apps from your contextual menu. Okay, once you click that, then it's going to ask me a couple questions. The first one is it's asking me is what is the Azure subscription you want to use to deploy your app? At this point on, the plugin is looking for all the Azure Spring App service instances under this subscription. It will list it here, uh, and then um, this, this one, this step takes you know a few seconds to run. But uh, and then the next question is going to ask me is what is the app uh, that it wants to, um, it will deploy against? Okay, so it's going to ask me these three questions. Okay, so here it, it is. This is the service instance, and here is the app that I'm going to deploy against. The app itself is called Simple Event Driven App. So click on that, and then here you notice on the bottom of the ID, we have an icon popping up saying it's uploading artifact to Azure Screen Apps, which is great. Okay, so uh, this is another way that you can deploy your app. Okay, let me go back to the slides here. However, to make this uh, deployment complete, there are a number of other st stops involved, right? So, and namely, we have to create the infrastructure for it. Service, we have to create a service bus. We have to create the Azure container environment. We have to create Azure Spring Apps service itself. We have to create the apps. What I've just done was only step six, the deployment part. Okay? Don't, remember, I still have to do the, the first five steps. Like, who wants to do that? I mean, as a developer, this is probably like a boring step. Right? I don't want to do it. You don't want to watch me do it. So instead, what I'll do here is something better here. Uh, we are going to. Okay, we're going to introduce another way for you to get started, and and to, to that will optimize your code to cloud experience. And this is called the Azure Developer CLI, or AZD for short. Uh, there are three steps involved in deploy this entire code sample with AZD. The first step is we're going to enable the AZD uh, the, or Azure Spring Apps feature for AZD. The second step is we're going to initialize the project 
uh, from GitHub repo, and uh, here I've, I've appended the, um, the URL from GitHub repo. And lastly, to get this up, all I need to do is one simple command, azd up, okay? Um, so to demonstrate that, I am going to show you that on my IDE. Copy and paste this guy here. I've already got a folder pre prepared, okay? Uh, and then the second step is I am going to init, init the Okay, so now it's downloading uh, the entire repo from GitHub repository, okay? And it's asking me for to create a name for the environment. So I'm gonna just say this is going to be my demo on five 19 demo um, uh, this it, okay let me let me run the last command and explain the, the previous step azd up okay uh, so what the previous step was did was it's it's basically asking me for just a, a name a variable name for the environment which is it's going to use that name to prepend to many of the configuration steps okay noticing the in the azd step ops uh, command, it defer, it's going to ask me a couple more questions. First question it's asking me is, what is the Azure subscription you uh, you would like to use for this deployment? I'm going to pick this one. I have many Azure subscriptions. I work for Microsoft. Um, so the next question is, uh, where is the location you're going to deploy this against? I'm going to pick East US. And that's it. That's all you have to tell AZD. At this point, it's on autopilot. Okay, it's gonna download the um, download the project from Maven. It's gonna build it locally. Uh, it's going to uh, deploy all the infrastructure, the service bus, uh, Azure container apps, Azure um, um, Azure Spring apps, all that stuff. The infrastructure part is gonna be all taken care of for you. Okay, and then it will basically handle all the steps, six steps I just showed you. Uh, the deployment will take about. 10 to 15 minutes to do, and along the way, it's going to tell you the the steps. I'm not going to wait for the uh, the the uh, this, the thing to run because I am out running out of time. But basically, we what it would look like is it'll look something like this when it's done. All right, it'll tell you all the steps that has performed, all the resources it has created, uh, and it's it's set it and forget it, right? It takes in 15, 15 minutes for you to run this demo. All right, uh, one thing I will mention is, so this version of, of AZD is currently in, in a private preview. Uh, it's not available public yet. However, there is a version of this AZD. It does not work for the consumption dedicated plan yet, but it does work with the all uh, with the standard enterprise and basic version of AZD. So to try that, uh, you can visit this link, aka.ms slash AZD my spring app. This is a URL to try the AZD experience. Okay. Finally, this is this is my la my last my last slide. Okay, we really want you to, to get started on the Azure Spring App standard consumption and dedicated plan. Uh, in November last year, we introduced another feature it's called the uh, monthly free grant that gives you 50 vCPU and 100 GB of monthly free usage. So you really have nothing to lose financially with trying our standard consumption dedicated plan. And we encourage you all to try our sample app by visiting aka.ms slash event driven spring app. That is the event driven app that I just showed you. Okay. So with that, I think I am at time as well. Yeah, I'm actually over time. Uh, thank you for coming. If you have questions, Adib and I will be available in the general area. You can also email us. Our email address is up. Thank you.